Hello everyone, it's Sandra, and welcome to today's video. Today we're talking empties and new products. As soon as my empties bin gets a little bit overwhelming, I rummage through, kind of try to group similar things together and talk you through them because nothing really spills the tea regarding true thoughts and feelings about a product than when you finally finish it. Was it a struggle to finish this product? Are you sad to finish the product? All these feelings help give a very well-rounded review, in my opinion. So when it comes to cleansing the body in the shower, I use shower oils or classic shower gels. I kind of just alternate between the two. Once I finish up one type, I buy a different type, and, and that's usually how it goes. For many years, the shower oil that kind of got me into shower oils was the L'Occitane Almond Shower Oil. I also like their Shea version. That's a good classic to start with. If you've never tried a shower oil and you kind of want to give it a try, maybe try a little travel size of that from either a L'Occitane store or from Sephora. That was kind of my gateway into shower oils. And I personally love them. I find that they still cleanse the skin in a really, really gentle way, but they don't leave the skin feeling dry at all. Um, and they're also great for shaving your legs. So after my dalliance with L'Occitane, I had discovered the Bioderma shower oil. I have used this for four years now, and this is something that I always repurchase because it's the best value for money in terms of shower oils. The scent is nice, it's nothing special, um, but it's, it's a nice, non-offensive, slightly sweet, floral type of scent. It doesn't linger on the skin or anything, but it's a very great, effective shower oil. So this is a favorite, this is one that I, I repurchase many times. Sometimes when I get sick of the smell and I want to try something new, I go for a Rituals shower oil. The Rituals shower oils come in a whole variety of scents. This was a Sakura, Sakura one, which is a cherry blossom scent. But I think my ultimate favorite is their citrus one. That one smells incredible, especially in the summertime because I, you know I'm a sucker for citrus blossom scents. So this is the best value for money. This is probably the one I repurchase most often, but this is nice to alternate if I'm just sick of the smell. And actually the shower oil that I'm using right now is the Bioderma again. Um, this goes on sale on Amazon quite often. Um, you can also find it on sale at Shoppers Drug Mart if you are in Canada. But in the United States, your best bet is usually Amazon. Sometimes CVS Online has like a two for one. Previously, I had also gone through some fancy shower gels and I adore all of these and I would repurchase all of these. I have repurchased these in, in the past. But if you're into woodsy, slightly musky scents, Take notes. So first is Lalabo Vetiver 46. This smells incredible. I love, love, love Vetiver. It's just like very smoky, very woodsy, but fresh at the same time. It's so, so good. And this is not something that I buy all the time. This is something that maybe I repurchase it once a year, once every couple years. If I'm just, you know, at a Lilabo store making an impulse purchase, or if I'm just really looking for a treat. My husband obviously really loves using this too, so. This is something we use occasionally as a treat. We buy occasionally as a treat um, in between our giant jars of the Bioderma, basically. It's not as smoky and woodsy, but it's definitely a really beautiful musky shower gel is the Kiehl's Original Musk Shower Gel. I'm a big fan of the Kiehl's Original Musk perfume. The matching shower gel is just as delightful also works really nicely as a bubble bath you don't need a lot of it to give you a really strong fragrance but i was going to repurchase this when kiehl's had a friends and family sale on their website that's usually when i buy this the reviews kind of alarmed me because people in the reviews were saying that they had changed the formula and that it doesn't smell the same and that it's really watery so i'm going to hold off ordering a replacement of this until I can maybe check a bottle out in person and kind of try and make up my own mind. I would be very sad if they changed the formula of this because this was a really great gentle body cleanser with a really great strong projection in terms of scent. Love to use it as a bubble bath and as a shower gel. So this is the Kiehl's. And then again for my musk aficionados out there, this is the Santa Maria Novella Musk Soap. This is 
They, they market this as a body soap and shampoo. I did use this as shampoo once when I was in a pinch. I found that it really did nothing to my hair. My hair didn't really feel extremely clean, but as a shower gel, this is really great. It was, the scent is beautiful. It's such a beautiful musk. It's, it's cleaner than the Kiehl's musk. The Kiehl's musk scent is a, a slightly bit more woodsy, whereas the Santa Maria Novella musk scent is cleaner and fresher. It kind of enhances and brings a little bit more joy into a regular everyday experience. Moving on to some skincare, I have some hydrating serums that I have finished and I actually enjoyed all of them, but I can't say I have enjoyed either of them so much as to run out and repurchase, but I am quite promiscuous when it comes to hydrating serums, hyaluronic acid serums. I just usually jump from brand to brand. I think the one that I have most, the ones that I've most consistently repurchased over the years had been either the Bioderma Hydro Bio one or the Jordan Samuel Skin Hydrate Serum. Those are the ones that I've repurchased most often. But in between, I've always enjoyed jumping from serum to serum, and there, there are so many incredible ones on the market. Starting out with the Skin Regimen Microalgae Essence. Now, this is marketed as an essence, but it definitely felt more like a serum to me. Really hydrating, really nice ingredients list. I have actually very much enjoyed everything I've tried from the brand Skin Regimen. I find they're very much under the radar but their products are fantastic. They also smell incredible. They have this really nice woodsy scent. Their moisturizer is great, especially if you're somebody with more oily combination skin, very lightweight and hydrating. I'm down to try more from this brand. I'm just, like I said, I'm just promiscuous when it comes to hydrating serums and I usually either get if something is sent to me from a brand or if a brand reaches out and they want me to pick something from their range, usually I would choose a hydrating serum. I find that it's a pretty low risk um, skincare item to try when you're dabbling into a new brand, but this is this was very nice. Next, I tried a sample of the Caudalie um, Radiant Serum. This is something that so many people were talking about online, and I was just really curious one day, and I added it to my Sephora card. This was like one of those bonus point perks from Sephora. Uh, it was very nice, a little kind of went a long way. I found that it was very nice and hydrating, but again, nothing remarkable. Then the hyaluronic acid serum that I have used up most recently is this very, very fancy one from Shantikai. This is the Shantikai Blue Light Protection Hyaluronic Serum. This has chock full of plant extracts in there. It also has that signature Shantikai rose water scent because instead of using water, they use rose water. That's the first ingredient on the list. This was beautiful. I enjoyed it. Very, very hydrating and you don't need a lot of it. One pump was all I needed all over my face and sometimes in the mornings if I was having a more oily skin day I don't even need a moisturizer on top of this I would just go in with my sunscreen and then I would be good to go but the price point is just very very high for a hydrating serum so if you have the budget if you're really into luxury skincare and you want a beautiful hydrating serum that's just a treat to apply every single day check out the Shantikai but maybe wait for it to go on sale um, you know, skin store, derm store look fantastic. The Shantikai website often run pretty decent promotions where you can get up to 25% off. As for the blue light protection, I'm not very well versed in in the, the dangers of blue light. I, I from from what I have I understand is the jury is still out whether blue light really is something we should be concerned about in regards to our skin. I, I'll be honest. Usually I'm pretty good and, and I and I like to dig deep and, and try and and be better informed before I will make a video. And, and state my opinions on, on any marketing claims or anything like that, but I just, I just haven't had the time to research blue light, to be honest. Um, I just see some people online say that, yeah, it's a thing we should be concerned about, and some people online are like, no, it's just marketing, like, don't worry about it. So I don't know <laughs> where I stand with this yet. If you are more educated on, on blue light, please feel free to illuminate us in the comment section below. Beautiful hydrating serum, that's what I was using this for. The hydrating serum that I'm using right now is the Glossy Super Bounce, and I actually bought this sometime before the pandemic. I was just cleaning out a drawer in my bathroom and I found this in the box, and then I was like, oh my gosh, I have a new hydrating serum to use. So this is what I'm using right now. 
the Glossy Super Bounce. I actually really enjoy it. It's very, very, very lightweight and silky. It's, it's more lightweight than the Jordan Samuel Skin, than the La Roche-Posay, than the Vichy. Uh, lighter weight than Chantikai. Similar in weight with the um, Skin Regimen, but feels more silky. The Skin Regimen kind of left like a little bit more of like a tacky finish on the skin. The Caudalie was actually quite heavy in comparison as well. This is incredibly lightweight. I guess it would remind me the most um, of the Bioderma Hydra Bio Serum. Not sure if you've ever used that. That was one of my favorites back in the day. I used to use that all the time. This reminds me the most of the Bioderma Hydra Bio, especially in, in, in the way my skin responds to it. Um, the only main difference is that this is completely unscented. No, there's no fragrance in it. The Bioderma one has quite a bit of fragrance in it. And the Bioderma one also has more silicone in it. So it almost kind of has that silicone primer type of feeling, whereas this doesn't have a silicone-y feeling at all. It feels really nice and silky. Doesn't feel tacky on the skin once it sinks in. It's incredibly lightweight. And I think it's a great texture for those of us with oily combination skin in the summertime because it gives you hydration without weighing your, your I was gonna say without weighing your hair down without weigh, weighing your face, your skin down at all. It's it's actually really nice. I'm very pleasantly surprised by this. I thought it was over Glossier, but this is um, this was a pleasant surprise. A couple more skincare-y types of things. I did use this uh, Indeed Labs Peptolash. This was like a lash enhancing serum. And I mean, I haven't really noticed any miracles, but I did like the way, um, I like the way that it comes just in a pen and you, you just squeeze it up and then you apply it. Then I used up this beautiful Caudalie lip balm. This was my work day at the keyboard staple. I'm, you know, especially in the colder months, I was just constantly reapplying this and I really enjoyed this. Not sticky and I love the scent. It was a very fresh, slightly fruity scent. I actually don't have a lip balm on my, on my desk anymore and what I've been doing instead is just applying lip balm overnight or in the morning um, right like while I'm doing my makeup I just do my lips last but the first thing I do before I start my foundation or anything is I put on some lip balm and I've really been enjoying this Too Faced Hangover Pillow Balm. Um, it's clear, it's you know comes with a big old doe foot applicator and it's very cushiony, feels great on the lips and I haven't used this overnight because I'm very happy with my Clarins Hydra, uh, Hydra Essential Lip Balm. That's my favorite overnight one to use. But this has been a great kind of makeup priming lip balm to use. So that's my, those are my current lip balms that I'm using. Now let's talk some makeup. I have used up some makeup and I also have a couple of things that I'm just not, they're just not working for me and that I'm going to be decluttering. One of them is a Project Pan item. I'm sorry, I've tried. I've tried to make it work. It was in my Project Pan. Um, this was not a product that I bought. This is a product that was sent to me. I thought I could try and use it up this year, but I just don't like it. And it's the It Cosmetics Bye Bye Pores Illumination. This is a pressed powder. And every time I use this, it just, I feel like it makes my pores look worse. It's quite chalky and white and it just makes my skin look dry. The illumination isn't really there. It, it's like putting flour on my face, honestly. I just can't, I can't with this. So I'm decluttering it. Instead, the pressed powder that I'm going to try to use up this year, I don't think I'm going to use it up this year, but at least I'm going to try to hit pan on it this year. It's the Sicily uh, Blur powder, which I actually really like. So at least this powder I will be using. Um, but it definitely feels like there's quite a lot of product in here, so I'm curious if I'll hit pan by the end of the year. That's gonna be my goal. One project pan item that I was able to finish is the Surratt Wand Foundation, the Surreal Skin Wand. I hated this foundation. I had to mix it with other stuff in order for me to get it to work for me. But yeah, this was a huge disappointment for me. I just, I had such high expectations and by itself, every time I tried to wear this foundation, it looked really unflattering on my dry patches. And when I didn't have dry patches, whether 
you know, whether I was really well exfoliated and my skin was perfectly primed and hydrated, my skin would be too oily for it throughout the day. It just didn't really sit nicely on my skin. And I mixed it with the um, Lancome Tanti Doll. This is my savior. You know, every time I have a foundation that doesn't work for me, I mix it with Lancome Tanti Doll and then it works. So I, I was able to kind of play mixologist and I was able to use it up. There isn't that much foundation in here to begin with. You only get half an ounce. Um, it's quite an expensive foundation for what it is. It also has like this built-in brush that looks disgusting over time. Um, so yeah, disappointing product. Would not repurchase, would not recommend, but it was in my project pan and I'm glad I can finally let it go because I've had this for a long time. And then speaking of the devil, I used up Lancome Tanti Doll. This is, I don't remember how many tubes of this I tr I've gone through over the years, but this is this is one of my top five favorite foundations. Um, I use the shade 230 Buff W, and I don't have a backup of it because I am still trying to work through other foundations in my collection, but I will be repurchasing this at some point in the future, I'm sure. And then I have one more declutter, actually. I have a cosmetic CC cream in the shade Medium, and unfortunately, this is, um, there's a lot of sunscreen in this product and sunscreen is an active ingredient that expires and it's one of those products where it's, it's not really recommended to use base products with sunscreen past their expiration date. I'm glad to see it go, to be honest. This is a product that is so, so hyped. I have so many people in my life that absolutely love this product and I, this just doesn't work for me. When I use this by itself, it slips and slides. It makes me look really cakey. And when I sheer it out, if I use it with a beauty blender, it just doesn't wear nicely on my skin. The only way I've been able to make it work has been, again, by mixing it with Lancome Tanti Doll. This is actually a really, really good combination. I also used to mix this with the, uh, the L'Oreal Infallible Pro Matte Foundation. That was another good combination, but yeah, I'm just, this is just not, not for me. The Trini London BFF cream is so much better for my skin. That one, my skin can handle. The NARS Tinted Moisturizer is so much better for my skin. And again, same family of product, but I just found stuff that works better for my skin type. This is just not, it's, it's one of those called classics that never worked well for me. And I don't like the matte version either. In terms of new-ish base products, I did buy these two little travel size, um, products from Tatcha and it's the Tatcha silk canvas. I bought the old school one and the liquid silk canvas. This is one of those products that I've always been so curious about, but I never bit the bullet, but Tatcha was having a sale and I needed to stock up on the blotting papers. The Tatcha blotting papers are my favorite blotting papers. And I was like, oh, what the heck? Let's just, let's try the famous Tatcha silk priming collection because now they have little travel sizes of them and I felt that that was a great way to try the products out. I have yet to try the, uh, the liquid silk canvas, but I have tried the old school, the original silk canvas. I've tried it twice so far. I tried it yesterday and today. It smells really nice. And I have to say, I have noticed zero difference. My pores aren't any more blurred. My foundation isn't lasting longer, applying better or anything like that. I mean, it's not worse, but it's also not better. So I'm going to keep trying to play with this. Let me know what your experience has been with either of these products, if you've tried them before. But so far, um, just from using the original silk canvas, I'm quite underwhelmed because I literally see no difference. Like my pores don't disappear magically when I put this on. Um, it doesn't pill or anything, which is nice. It doesn't dry out my skin. But um, yeah, I just haven't really noticed any significant difference in the way my makeup has has been wearing and applying, but it's only day two. So jury is still out, but so far that's my experience. And then the last two exciting new items in my makeup collection are my Lisa Eldridge items. I received them yesterday in the mail and I was so excited. I'm wearing this today. This is the Lisa Eldridge Affair Gloss. Gloss for the summertime if you're into warmer tones. This with a little bit of MAC stripped down lip liner. So yeah, this is Lisa Eldridge Affair Gloss. I love her gloss formula. It's so, it's so comfortable to wear. There's no fragrance, it's not sticky, and as it wears throughout the day, like it has a decent amount of pigment that, that you can see the pigment on your lips, but as the gloss 
wears away, it leaves your lips feeling really moisturized, which is what I really enjoy about it. And then I also bought the Kitten Mischief lipstick. I couldn't help myself. I don't need another lipstick, but I really do like Lisa Eldridge. Um, I, I really like her luxuriously lucent lip formula. It's, it's like a buildable, sheer lipstick formula. And the color is really good. It's a very nice balance between pink and, and peach. I thought I would compare it with some, some other favorites of mine. So this is the Armani Ecstasy Mirror, Ecstasy Mirror in 502. So you can see the Ecstasy Mirror is way shinier and way more pink. The Luxuriously Lucent, it has luminosity to it, but it's not a high shine like lipstick formula. This is the Sephora, what's it called? The Melting Lip Click in shade 01 Caramel. I thought it would be another interesting comparison. Again, this is a lot shinier and a lot more mauve. This is Bare Rose from Jouer. This is actually the closest. Let me do Bare Rose next. Uh, no, Bare Rose is still more mauve. So there's just something about Kitten Mischief. I'm just out here trying to save you money in case you have the same lipstick taste as I do and you might already have something similar. Okay, Gamine. Gamine by Surratt is, is the closest, but it's still more pink. You see that? Not even more pink, maybe more pink. I don't know, it's, Gamine seems a bit brighter. Here's Kitten Mischief by Lisa Eldridge. This is Gamine by Surratt. This is Bear Rose by Jouer. This is Armani 502. This is Sephora Melting Lip Click in 01. And then this is another Jouer Bare Rose over here. That's my lip product ramble for now. Thank you for hanging out with me today. Thank you for watching this video. Let me know any of the products that you've bought recently. Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Um, and yeah, that's about it. Hope you're having a great day and I will see you in my next video. Bye.